good, guys? It's your boy Spider Man, aka D Man. Your man, I'm sitting here with my sister, my day one, the one who holds it down for me, my co host, Daria. Say what's up, Daria. What's up, Daria? Yeah, you're back. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> She's back in the saddle doing this smash pay per view predictions. If you've never listened to us or watched us, because we are on YouTube, I don't know why. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. Ashamed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should be. If you've never listened to us or watched us, you uh, here's how we do things here at Smash Preview Predictions. Uh, we run through the match card. We give you our predictions. We let you know our thoughts on the matches. And then we move the freak on. <laughs> Joining us tonight with, with the, the coughing sibling. With the coughing sibling, yes. Uh, is our resident hero, King Dead. Say what's up, King Dead. What's up, King Dead? See, I'll take that because I walked right into it, just right yeah. into it. You always do. Always do. Always yeah. do. But I, yeah. I, you know what? I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. How you doing there, buddy? Doing all right. Doing all right. <laughs> Are you ready for the last pay-per-view of the decade? Wow. That's just shocking, isn't it? Yeah. This oh, year, right. this, this past 10 this years. This is the end of the decade. This yeah. is the end of the decade. The end of the decade. Yeah. And we're ending it. With TLC, so we're not going out without a bet. Okay, first of all, before we get into the match card, <laughs> it's the last pay per view of the decade, and it's just a nothing TLC. Like, like WWE is usually on point when it Are comes they? to their yeah, when it comes to their 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 dates and like oh hey this got to be a spectacular thing, the last thing in his like for. Well, two or three year, years for okay. two or three years. <laughs> I was gonna say because last year TLC was like only one TLC match. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because that was just like the last TLC of 2018. This is the last TLC of the decade. And WWE is usually good at hammering in those points of like the for the first time or for the last time in history. Michael Cole used to do it for like every damn thing. Everything was historical. But now you have an actual historic moment mm -hmm. and you don't do anything with it. Are you done? Why? Maybe WWE has some surprises. Maybe, maybe they do. Maybe they do. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's jump right here into the match card as we are wont to do. Yes. A match as card. we are wont to do. Yeah. That our, is our correct grammar. Yeah. W O N T. Want. As we are wont to do. Yeah. You have two verbs in the same sentence. No, as we are wont to do. It's, it's not Are a verb. and want. No, want is not a verb. Oh it's an adjective. God. However it goes, that's not correct grammar. It is correct grammar. It's perfect grammar, as we are want to do. Anyway, as my sister derails us. I didn't derail. That was all Completely derailed us. Let's start us <laughs> off with our first tag team championship match uh, with the Viking Raiders. Wait, wait. Yeah, Viking wait, Raiders. Wait, first? I had to double check. I had Match card is subject to change, and the order is subject to change. You know how this goes, D. <coughs> yep. I, I do. Okay. We have the Viking Raiders. I had to double check because they keep on changing their names every few weeks. The Viking Raiders <laughs> against TBD. It is an open challenge for the Raw Tag Team Championships. And this is going to be a big one because I want to know who is going to be challenging them and if they are going to unseat the Viking Raiders. Now, this past uh, Monday Night Raw, mm -hmm. we ended up seeing the Viking Raiders versus the Street Profits. Yes. In a title match. match. It was a pretty good, it pretty was a good short match. match. It, it, it mm -hmm. yeah. in comparison to their NXT matchups, but it was still a pretty damn good match by WWE uh, main roster standards uh, for what it was because there was no build up to it. I didn't know what was happening. I don't think anybody knew what was happening until the day of the event or the day before the event. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now we have an actual open challenge against uh, the Viking Raiders. Uh, I know one team is not going to be challenging for them uh, for the title. Who? The Ascension. And the Usos? Well, um, and AOP? Oh. See, well, see, see! Now you're spoiling things. Yeah, you're kind of oh, spoiling. spoiling things. Okay, I was, I was bad. saying, I was saying the Ascension because they got released. They're no longer in WWE anymore. Yeah, they gone. They, they started running down teams that I had actually completely forgotten weren't back yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. My Spoiler. bad. I, I was trying to go in with the conversation. Anyway, 
yeah. KD, who do you have possibly challenging the Viking Raiders, and who well, do you have possibly unseating them? I wasn't even thinking about it, but it is an open challenge, and technically we've been missing the Usos for a while, so... Yeah. I completely just neglected to remember that they uh, <laughs> were around. Hey, they existed, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, you lose track of people when they kind of disappear. Oh, yeah, geez, that's, I don't even know. I mean, Street Profits seemed like the obvious one, but suddenly, I mean, it's like the Usos. I don't think it's time yeah. for the Viking Raiders to lose yet, but I think whoever challenges them should at least put on an entertaining match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah I, uh, yeah, I agree, because the Street Profits, as we saw the match on Monday, yes. that was a big indication, like, yeah, okay, so we know what's going to happen at TLC. I don't know who's going to show up. Sorry, I spoiled it. <laughs> Yes, my bad. Really bad. While you're being unprofessional, hey, I, I'm trying to make sure my thing is not going off anymore. So, so keep going. I'm gonna go for the Viking Raiders. Uh, who's gonna show up? I'm gonna stick with the Usos since, again, we haven't seen them. So you got the Usos. Sorry about that. You got the Usos mm-hmm. going up against the Viking. I uh, there's really only two teams that you could possibly say would go up against the Viking Raiders right now because the tag team division is very, very 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 light it's a diet tag team division i can't aside from the usos and aside from the street profits who else is there that would make for a good match i mean you have hawkins and Ryder. <coughs> but i think they have their own match don't they no they don't really because hawkins and Ryder are whack they're not whack i love you guys i, I i'm i'm I was gonna I'm, say rude. I'm, I'm i'm sorry about that but they're not they're not really going to be like oh my god it's hawkins and and Ryder. Going up against the Viking Raiders is not going to like you know be a big ass. Oh my God, this is an amazing thing that I want to see mm. for this match. Okay. So I can't think of any other teams that are on Raw. So it's a toss up between the Street Profits and the Usos. I say it's probably going to be the Street Profits again. Might be. I don't think the Usos are ready to come back just yet. <laughs> or they might have a bigger platform than the Usos. Yeah, they I mean, might have something bigger, like, like Royal Rumble. They might they might return during Royal Rumble. I think that'd be better than, uh, you know, a nothing TLC. But I also sure. got the Viking Raiders continuing uh, their dominating ways because who like really they need. It's weird because the Viking Raiders have not lost. They've not been made to look weak, but that at the same time their run has just been kind of like <coughs> lackluster. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of existed. Yeah, because they've been going up against like a bunch of jobbers and like Street Profits are probably going to be their biggest. You know. Rival? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So, I can see so it. I, I, I go for I go for the Viking Raiders. <clears throat> okay. We have What is that for? What's next? Let's see. We have quite possibly. Oh my god, why is this a thing? The worst storyline. Of WWE? Of the past decade. Oh, Lord. Aside from the other time they tried to have a lot of cheating on Rusev or Rusev cheating on a lot of whatever storyline what where a fish and a shoe <laughs> was thrown. Oh god, that was just dumb. Wait a minute, a fish and a shoe. Yeah, I mm-hmm. gotta show you that. <clears throat> somebody it was like, embarrassing. somebody threw a shoe and I believe somebody threw a fish. If I can recall correctly. Yeah, there was a fish involved. We're moving on. We have Rusev versus Bobby Lashley with a Lana on a table match, basically. It's a tables match. Wait, so Lana's going to be on a the table? They're I don't know. Lana. I'm making a joke. Or is Lana just going to want to... Or is Rusev going to want to have sex with Lana and then... Bo- I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, you're, you're reading too much into my damn joke. I, I way just, too much into it. It's not that. It's, it's way just, too much into it. This is a who gives a shit match. This is definitely a who gives a shit match. Rusev versus Bobby Lashley with Lana in a tables match. Winner gets nothing. Winner gets out of this with some momentum because right now nobody has any momentum. Aside from Rusev with his tucked in Donald Duck shirt that he wore on Monday Night Raw okay, that was during awesome. the 15 minute long ass segment that he didn't need to have on Monday Night Raw. You caught so, that, KD? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm not I'm not happy about that at all. No one whatsoever. is whatsoever. So we are going to move on and KD tell me uh who you got for this nothing match. Ugh, I don't even care. Um, <laughs> we'll say Russo. Yeah, let's get it done. 
This is this is getting done. Rusev. Rusev. Because Jesus Christ. We're done. Moving on. We're done. Moving the mm-hmm. frick on because nobody gives a shit. No. We now have an actual match that now. is intriguing as hell. Yeah. Because we have the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka <coughs> and Kyrie <gasps> Sane. Oh, yes. This is Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Uh, yeah, this is very interesting because, uh, let's see, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, they still hate each other. Now, the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka has been spitting in the face of Charlotte Flair since Survivor Series. It's happened at <laughs> least two other times outside of that, just spitting green mist in her face. And she said, you know what? Enough is enough. Mm-hmm. Put on an incredible handicap match against the Kabuki Warriors, yes. uh, which saw Kairi Sane drop an insane elbow on Charlotte Flair while she was putting in the figure eight. I thought that was an amazing spot. I loved it. Very, yeah. Uh, Now, Charlotte Mm -hmm. decided, you know what? I'm going to let bygones be bygones. Let me speak to Becky Lynch and say, you know what? Maybe we should team up with each other uh, because these two are a problem and I don't like dealing with problems on my own. Becky Lynch, on the other hand, said, nah, I got this. I can handle them by myself. Spoiler alert, she didn't. Uh, no. She didn't. But she has the capability to do that. She, they, they both put on great matches against in a handicap spot. Yes, they did. But now they've had two handicap matches. They are sitting in the back licking their wounds after the, the Kabuki Warriors beat up Charlotte Flair. Back in. Yes, they were licking their wounds. And they decided, you know what? Maybe we should start teaming up against the Kabuki Warriors. So okay. that's where we're mm-hmm. at right now with this storyline. I absolutely kind of, I absolutely kind of, wow. I, I enjoy this little storyline that we find ourselves to be. <laughs> yeah, in. I do too. Um, so let's just jump right into it. King Dead, Dedicus, Dead Man, uh, Walking. Who you got? I want the Kabuki Warriors to win because screw Charlotte. <laughs> you don't like the Queen. I do not. You don't like you don't like the the the, the Queen <laughs> of Staten Island. Mm-mm. I know that's not her name, but I just you know that's she gets Carmella. way too many I opportunities. <laughs> I mean. Side note. I, I'm going to jump into that later. True. Yeah. Go for it. Who you got, uh, Daria? Kabuki. Hello. Asuka and Kyrie. Are you serious? Okay. Uh, I got the Kabuki Warriors. You are absolutely correct because Charlotte Flair, I'm trying to think of the last non-title feud that she had that was sustained uh, for more than just like a month. Wasn't that a match with the, uh, what's her name on one of the last pay-per-views? One of the uh, Hall of Famers? Trish? Yeah. Yeah. That was a... But that was a non-title match, wasn't it? That was a non-title match, but that was a while ago. But it was this year. Yeah, it was still a while ago. I said I can't remember the last time. That was like months and months and months ago. Oh, you're talking recently? Yeah, I can't okay. remember like the most recent non-title uh, feud that she's been in. I think she feuded with Natalia for a second, or maybe uh, 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 Tracy Morgan. What's her name? The Marine. Uh, Lacey Evans. Uh, Lacey I don't know Evans. why I called it Tracy Morgan. I don't either. I, damn, I just fucked her old name up. You sure did. I think she had like a little mini feud with her for like a week or two. Okay. But that's it. Like, that's it. Everything has been revolving around titles. And yeah. uh, sometimes you got to have something that's happened that doesn't involve gold. And I really wish that they would develop her more to make me want to give a damn about her. Because, like, if she's not going after gold, I don't care. Sure. There's there's, there's nothing that draws me to Charlotte, like, that much. And I think uh, that even she admitted that she's kind of going through the motions <laughs> right around now. So she she definitely needs something to, to brighten her up. Now, while this is for the titles, I do think that, you know, her being a part of this tag team will kind of add some new flavor to her, you know, uh, I, Craig Mack style. <clears throat> I agree. I think it is so. Gonna- Pep her up a little bit. Just more. a little bit, no. Just give it it's like because like she's about to hit the female Randy Orton level, where it's like unless she yeah. really gives a damn about the story, <laughs> it's not gonna then be you're that not good. You're not really gonna give a damn about her. Mm-mm. Uh, so yeah, I got the Kabuki Warriors for this one. Now, Fair. next on our card is what I think will be the absolute best <laughs> match of the night. Oh yeah, it I will. think this will be the best, like not sleeper. Not not like, oh, it might steal the show. Like, no, this will be the show. Like, if they play their cards right, Buddy Murphy versus Aleister Black will be quite possibly the best match mm-hmm. of the night, hands down. Aleister Black has been saying, hey, 
I need a challenger. I need, I need somebody to knock on my door and yeah. pick a fight with me and Buddy Murphy. Just like knocks you know, on that door. not giving a damn. Just walks up after a match, knocks on his door. It's like I'm here to pick a fight with you. Yeah. And since then, like, holy crap, this is like been low key a pretty pretty nice little story that they've been telling just with yeah. these two just for a match just for a regular ass match i know and this might be the best storytelling that they've done with minimal anything with it yeah they, they have they haven't thrown anything at this they haven't no. they haven't tried to they, they <laughs> got out of their own way and let alistair black and buddy murphy two low-key great talkers yeah amazing workers in the ring yeah let them tell their story without any of the extra pomp and circumstance, no stupid, you know, little gimmicks here and there. It's yeah. just like, hey, I want to pick a fight with you. Alistair Black is going, okay, you're picking a fight with me. Here's what you're about to get into. Yeah. And from then on, it's just been an amazing run of mm -hmm. things. Uh, there's nothing more really to say about this. KD, who do you got? Who do I got? Uh, I mean, this is a tough one because Buddy Murphy, yeah. like, you know, has been on a semi roll. I mean, you know, they kind of quieted down. Alistair Black is Alistair Black, and he's going to kick the hell out of somebody. Jeez. Yeah. Um, I almost want to say this will end in a DQ or a no contest, but I'm going to say Black wins. Daria? Yeah, since uh, Alistair wants this fight, I think he's going to win. Okay. Um, y'all remember that best out of seven series between Sheamus and Cesaro? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think that's going to spark between Aleister Black and Buddy Murphy. Oh, God, that would be amazing. That would be cool. Like, I, I would love to see that happen. Yeah, but that would like, be awesome. I, I say Aleister Black gets the first one because <clears throat> it's Aleister Black. And right. of course, you know, he's got to get that win because he's Aleister Black. I was going to say he's Aleister Black. But, so, yes. like, I would love to see Buddy Murphy just because, like, this is, this is who Buddy Murphy has been uh, <laughs> since they repackaged him in 205 Live. Uh, he's been going, like, he used to go after Cedric Alexander, like, repeatedly, mm -hmm. but just be completely undaunted by the fact that Cedric always seemed to have his number. Uh, he continued to come after him as if, like, I still believe that I can win this. Mm -hmm. And that same kind of attitude going up against Aleister Black would be, you know, amazing to see because Aleister Black is really had nobody to go up against no. uh, since his main title run. Well, he, besides he's had Cesaro, a, right? He's had, like, a few, like, you know, nice matches. He, he has some great matches. I'm not I'm not going to downplay the dude. He's had some great matches. And uh, I can't take anything away from him for that. What I can say, though, is he's not had an opponent that has pushed him to the limit. And if you got a guy like Buddy Murphy who has put on some amazing matches, oh, who yeah. has been a great character, a great talker on the mic <laughs> during 205 Live. He's been the one who's, you know, helped uh, that, that 205 Live resurgence uh, before he got pulled up to his sp roster spot on Raw. You gotta let this guy get a win in. Because yeah. he, his whole thing is that he is the, the best kept secret in WWE. Wouldn't it be amazing if the best kept secret forced a rubber match against Aleister Black? Sure. <laughs> so I got Aleister Black for this one, but I hope this is going to be a long program yeah. uh, between those two. Yeah. Uh, we only got three matches left. We're trying to run through all these because we have no singles title match uh, no. confirmed <clears throat> on the card. Wait, this is just a match. Oh my God. It's just a match. All right. Let's it go. is just a match. Now, this this might not be the best wrestling match, might be the best storytelling match that oh, we yeah. have on the card. Yeah. Uh, we have Bray Wyatt versus The Miz. And now it might be The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Notice it doesn't say The Fiend Fee, yeah. Bray Wyatt. It's, it's just Bray yeah. Wyatt. It's just Bray Wyatt. It's not The Fiend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that just, makes sense. It just says Bray sense. Wyatt. Okay. So I don't think we're going to see The Fiend, which means, thank God, we're not going to see the freaking stupid-ass red light during a throughout the whole damn match. Stop I that. Never WWE, stop say that. say never. Never say never. I mean, like, I if you bring it out for Bray Wyatt, then what's the point? I, I mean, it's like, like, if, like, if you're going to do it, only do it for The Fiend. I'm, Don't do it for regular ass Mr. Rogers Bray Wyatt. Why does he have to be Mr. Rogers? 
that's, come on now. He's going to come out in a sweater vest. How do you know? And doing the muscle man dance. How do you know? Doing the muscle what man What if he dance. comes out like in the 1980s workout outfits with a neon Okay, fine. That, 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 I would love it. Don't put the neon light on him. Oh my God. But Bray Wyatt has been going after Daniel Bryan. We have not seen Daniel Bryan since he shaved off his hair and or beard. Wait, what? Yeah, you missed that. Yeah. You missed that. Mm -hmm. He dragged him down the hill and like pulled out a razor and just started, you know, all we heard was the buzz of the razor and like tufts of hair getting thrown out of the hole in the mat. So Daniel Bryan is bald? We don't know. What the Because we haven't shit? seen him since then. Like, again, we moved on quick from Survivor Series I DLC. See. It has been like yeah. no slowdown. So wow. like Miz has decided, you know what? Uh, he's been trying to get Daniel Bryan not to face the Fiend, mm -hmm. or at least, you know, not to not to fall for the Fiend's tricks. Correct. It's failed. Daniel Bryan's gone missing, so now it's the Miz's turn. And Bray True. Wyatt has been taking advantage of this and going after the Miz's family. That's a no-go. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, I think it's a no-go for any. I mean, really, but yeah. It's a no-go. It's a no That's a no-no spot. Yes. But yeah, uh... <clears throat> That's, yes. that's that's the whole thing. Uh, the Miz has been taken up from for Daniel Bryan. Bray Wyatt has said, "Ah ha ha ha! I got your ass!" And went Absolutely. after his family. You yes, know, he did. you know, taking little putting little pictures here and there. He did. And that's where we're at with this one. I think it's, uh, you know, the Miz has been great in the ring. So I, I'm hoping that this will be an amazing match. Yes. So KD, who you got? Uh, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Damn. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's good enough for me. This has really just been a real quick run through. I don't think there's been any hard matches to call. This is like. No, it hasn't. It, it, it's not really that many hard matches to call. No. So, uh, Daria, who you got? Bray Wyatt. I mean, I don't really see the point in he loses and, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it can't happen, but... I have an interesting proposition. What is that? I mean, I'm choosing Bray Wyatt. I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm choosing cool. Bray Wyatt. Okay. But it could be an interesting thing to have happen. Bray Wyatt just loses to The Miz. Okay, but... Uh, just look, Bray Wyatt, as no fiend, just loses to The Miz. So, and then The Fiend comes in and he wins. The Fiend just comes in and is like, hey, you need me. Like, it, it might be some nice little storytelling, like, interpersonal okay. storytelling between Bray Wyatt and The Fiend because, like, they're treating them as two separate characters. That's true. So, like, why wouldn't Bray Wyatt just lose to The Miz? Well, I mean, The Miz is motivated, and Bray Wyatt is just Bray Wyatt. He's not The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. He's just Bray Wyatt. Okay. So why couldn't he lose? And, like, that's that's that could be a little bit of meta commentary based upon how he has been when it comes to a lot of his feuds. Like, up until he became The Fiend, Bray Wyatt only won one pay-per-view feud, and that was against Daniel Bryan. Where he shaved his head in his beard. No. Okay. No. I'm talking about, like, before he became The Fiend. Oh, okay. It when he passed. was When he was trying to recruit him into the Wyatt family, I think the oh. only big feud that Bray Wyatt has actually won while he was... Oh, excuse me. Bray Wyatt was against Daniel Bryan. Okay. So why shouldn't he continue the losing streak and lose to The Miz okay. on a pay-per-view? I still got Bray Wyatt, but I would not be surprised if they pulled the trigger and said, you know what, Miz, you just beat Bray Wyatt. He wasn't the fiend. He wasn't a crazy, you know, he was just insane Bray Wyatt. dude. He's just Bray <laughs> freaking Wyatt. That makes a Wyatt. lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, hey, I, that, at least, that would at least make this pay-per-view interesting. Yeah, it would. Because everything right now is very predictable. Mm -hmm. Because we have the New Day. Actually, no, this one might, might actually be hard to call. Why? The New Day versus The Revival for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Okay. There's really not a lot to say about this. There's, there's no... It's just, hey, we want the titles, and no, we have the titles. Yeah, that's true. I mean, The Revival have... The Revival have been not repackaged, but they've tried them out with titles and taken them away. And they've yeah. given them the titles again and taken take them right away. away. I don't think they it's team them up with them Randy Orton. Huh? I don't think it's meant for them to have a title. I mean, why not? 
yeah, they just keep getting it taken away. Uh, I mean, like a lengthy title run would work, but I mean, like, yeah, the, uh, I think the SmackDown tag team uh, picture looks way better than the Raw tag team picture. So it's kind of hard to, you know, see them, you know, have a lengthy title run because there's so many viable options right on there. On SmackDown. On SmackDown. Okay, makes sense. But uh, the one good thing that they tried to do with them <laughs> was team them up with Randy Orton and then that folds. Yeah. 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 So Revival yeah. versus The New Day. Who you got, King Dead? Uh, I'm going to say Revival somehow. I mean, this will this will be a little bit harder one because, like, yeah. I want the revival to win. <laughs> I do. I really do. Because the really new day doesn't the really need win. the title. Yeah. So, like, I can see why you say the revival, KD. Daria. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the new day. Ooh, now we're getting a split. Yeah, we got now a split I get to on be the tiebreaker. <laughs> we got a split on this one. If I trusted the way WWE handled uh, tag teams and handled certain personalities. <laughs> I would say uh, the revival lose this match just to set up for something much bigger at Royal Rumble, but like the way that they handled Kofi Kingston, the way that they handled the last time the revival had the title and got it taken away, they just like once the title changes hands, they completely forget that there's a story there. Okay. They just completely fucking forget. It happens way too freaking often. Like Kofi loses the Kofi loses the world heavyweight title. And he's just like, hey, I'm back to being happy and clapping and like, new no, day rocks. And it's like, I get, you know, that you're just like ready to go back to work. But at the same yeah. time, like, at least give us some sort of a resolution. And there's a lack of resolution with all four yeah. members involved in this tag team match. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, I, I say the revival get it. And it's just going to be forgotten the very next Friday night SmackDown. Probably. And that, there, there's absolutely nothing here. And it has nothing to do with the performance. It has everything to do with the way that they handle these stories. And they need yeah. to do a better job with it. Yeah, for do. me to, for <laughs> me and for any of the other fans to really like seem to give a damn about what's happening right here uh, between a lot of these teams. Because they have a lot of good tag teams on SmackDown. They got the Heavy Machinery. They got uh, the New Day. They got the Revival. Uh, who else do they have? Uh, the Lucha Bros. Or not the Lucha Bros. The Lucha, the Lucha House Libres. Party. Yeah. Uh, and they're trying to team up um, Ali with uh, Umberto Carrillo. So yeah. like, they, they have a lot of good bodies that they yeah. can throw into the tag side. No, no, no. It was, uh, <laughs> it was Ali and Gable. I think I think they've interchanged them all, but like still, say, they, yeah. they, they got they got a lot of, they got a lot of <clears throat> bodies that they could throw at the tag team division for this, uh, and it really sucks that they don't develop something with this. Uh, I think the really last good tag team uh, story was between the Usos and the New Day during the Hell in a Cell match that was completely amazing. If you have the network, go ahead and go back to that uh, Hell in a Cell just no holds barred match. Go ahead and watch that. Uh, we're down to the final match of the night. Again, nobody really gives a shit. <sighs> We've seen fursuits. We've, We've seen, seen dog, dog food. Oh, dog food. I thought it was dog feces. Really? <laughs> Would you put it past? Would you Cons put it past? Considering, okay, yeah, no. Okay. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past some. I, I would not. And I, I mean, it's that. completely unhygienic, but... Incredibly you know. unhygienic, but you know what it is. They get thrown in garbage cans. That's unhygienic. Anyway, we've seen and, a bunch of Kevin Owens tomfoolery. was thrown in a porta party. We've seen a bunch of tomfoolery between these two. Mm -hmm. And I cannot give a shit. I don't think anybody does. Can you? No, not really. KD, can you give a damn about this shit? Not at all. It's, it's just the worst. It is absolutely <laughs> the freaking worst. So, who cares? It's a TLC match between Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin. It's likely to go on last. It could be a good match. I do not put it past Roman Reigns to pull Baron Corbin into a good match. Baron Corbin has great matches against smaller people. He's a bit of a dud when it comes to people around his size. Yeah, he is. But I don't put it past Roman Reigns pulling this to a good match. There's gonna be shenanigans. It's gonna of definitely course. be Bobby Roode and 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 what's his face? Dolph Ziggler. Hopping, uh, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, speaking of Dolph Ziggler, and you talk about dog shit when he was part of the Spirit Squad, they got poop dumped on him on the stage. So within the past okay. decade. <laughs> 
So yeah, you're not wrong. And Kevin Owens was putting the porter potty and uh, lugged around by Bray Wyatt. Ugh. Can't do who you got. Just, just, just who you got. Uh, I don't even give Roman. I suppose. Roman, you suppose that that's where we're at right now. This is the last pay per view of the freaking decade. Yeah, and we're at the, the 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 main event, and you're at. I suppose that's where we're at. Give us a match we care about. Like that's what we're saying. This is this is this is insane. Like why haven't we like we have one good match? Scratch that. Two, maybe three good matches on this card. Yeah, and that's because of the New Day, Aleister Black, and the Viking Raiders. Actually, I was saying Bray Wyatt. Oh, and the Kabuki Warriors. I, I was actually going to say it was uh, the New Day, uh, Aleister Black, and uh, Bray Wyatt, but I completely forgot about the Kabuki Warriors. Because mm -hmm. they've been putting on some matches. They've been putting on some matches, too. So, yeah. so like, okay, so that's four out of the seven yes. matches that are, that are de definitively going to be good. Don't know what's happening with the Viking Raiders. What was the other freaking match that we had? Because I just pulled away know. from that bullshit. <laughs> Rusev and Bobby Lashley. And bunch now this shit. Matches. A bunch of cares matches. A bunch of matches that nobody gives a shit about. Yeah. Daria, who, who you got? It's probably going to be Corbin because a bunch of bullshit. Probably going to be Corbin because a bunch of bullshit. Fuck it. I'm probably going to go Roman Reigns because, like... I, I hope he wins. I just see some tomfoolery going on. I do too, but I see and no I just... reason. I see no reason why... why Corbin should win because unless they really see gold in this feud, I don't have a reason why he should this win. should continue. It shouldn't. And it will continue if Corbin wins. If Roman Reigns wins, at least Corbin can fuck off. At least Corbin can fuck off. To where? I don't care. Feud with Ali. That would actually be pretty good. Oh my God, please. Feud what with are Ali. we doing with Ali? Nothing. Because as I said, up against smaller guys, he is amazing. His matches <laughs> against Chad Gable were great. They were. For him, that was great. Let him feud with Ali. Get rid of the fucking shorty G shit. Run. Get rid of goddamn Roman Reigns. Last pay-per-view of the decade. And at best, it's probably going to be a C plus. At yeah, really. best. At best. At best. At best. And that's the best you got for us, man. Mm -hmm. At best. Um, unless you're 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 like hoping that you can get all your eggs in one basket for Roman Reigns, uh, for Roman Reigns, for Royal Rumble, and you know, hey, Freudian slip. I got nothing, man. Like this is this is whack. The whole time, like January, like I don't even give a damn about Royal Rumble. I got Wrestle Kingdom. We got tickets to AEW. Uh, the next month is gonna be AEW Chicago run during basically Lethal Leap Year. Oh, that's right. Next year is Leap Year. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so so like like you guys you guys are not even like super winning the ratings war right now. You're not winning the war of the 18 to 45 demographic or what 18 to 30. I don't care who gives a shit. There, that, that demographic, that, that honey spot demographic, nobody okay. gives a shit. You're not winning that. So you gotta start stepping up. Okay. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ranting right now. I I'm see. I'm definitely ranting while you while you go check your stuff on screen. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta stop that, because nobody can see that. <laughs> nobody can see your own camera! <laughs> you don't see me over here at a whole big ass screen <laughs> knowing what I'm doing when I can still be looking up Matt. <laughs> so how? Yeah, I'll bust you out. Anyway, let's, let's go ahead and hit the show intro. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, we should have half assed this shit. I don't give a damn right now. This is a half assed ass goddamn pay per view. As always, you can catch our podcast on iTunes. Link in the description below. Go ahead and hit that, baby. Or at the website at hillcatcher.com. There you can find our shows, articles, and merchandise to keep this site up and running. Yes, go ahead and hit Hillcat. Did you unplug yourself? I did. Keep going. Wow. Yeah. Hillkaiju.com slash shop where you can see our merchandise. Yay, yay. Uh, and help us keep fighting you with content. Keep the site up and running. Keep us doing what we need to do. Uh, you could also join the Kaiju Wrecking Crew by following us on our Twitter account at Hillkaiju, where we'll provide any updates, developments, and insights. Thanks again for listening. Thank you again, KD, for joining us. We Thank appreciate you, KD. you more than you ever yeah, no know. no problem. 
I know that we're missing SmackDown, but who, again, gives a shit? I don't think anybody does. And remember to keep smashing.